Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? <laughs> What's up, nerds? Welcome to a very, very special episode of the Multiverse Report. We are recapping the fifth episode, sixth, sixth ep- sorry, sixth episode of the Book of Boba Fett from Mos Pelgro to Freetown and everywhere in between. My name is Mike Gibson. With me as always is Steve Haller. What's up, Steve? Wow. Uh, wow. A lot um wow we, we just saw 30 minutes 40 47 minutes of 47 um, minutes absolutely some of the best star wars that has ever been made my god yes <laughs> i agree with that completely okay so yeah we um we thought this episode was so special and so wonderful that we needed to record an immediate reaction to it um so that's what you're getting right now um so this entire this is just an episode about spoiler filled reactions to episode six of the book of Boba Fett. Right out of the gate, I have I need to make sure this is clear. I don't I I don't know. I just want <laughs> I want you and I want the listener to understand my confusion. Yep. The entire episode, watching it, thinking that this was the season finale of the book of Boba Fett. The whole time I was like. Okay, I I was it was mixed emotions for me because I was like I love this so much, but how is this the season finale yeah. of this show? They're wrapping up zero threads. They're leaving more open. Right. It's based. It's another Mandalorian episode, more or less, going off of the previous episode. How is this the season finale? And then right before we just went live right now, Steve's like, oh, no, there's one next week, you idiot. (laughs) So anyone who listened last week, we did talk about how there was six episodes. Lo and behold, we were wrong because I was when I watched it this morning, I was under the same impression. And when I got to the end, I was like that. I should probably look it up. And there was a seventh episode coming next week. So we may be back depending on how that goes and uh, talk to you then. But I'm really um, happy about that because I really like since the season started, I thought there was only six episodes. Like for the whole time, I thought there was only six. Yep. So I'm glad there's a seventh, especially now because I need to see some kind of resolution for these plot lines. Honestly, this, this episode I loved so much that I was like, Okay, fine. I'll I'll wait till season two for to figure out find out what happened, <laughs> right. or maybe it'll maybe they'll do what this show did, and we'll just the in the middle of Mandalorian season three, we'll get the finale of Book of Boba Fett. Um, and they're just gonna like swap each other out. Everyone, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I'm glad there's another episode. I'm glad this wasn't the season finale. I really thought it was right up until we hit record. Um, so I'm glad that we didn't. I'm glad that I, I'm glad that it's not. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. I'm really I literally just finished watching this. Uh it's been about 15 20 minutes since I finished watching it, so I am buzzing with uh just nerdity and uh dorkgasm uh just yep. in the after in the afterglow still. So, so yeah, for anyone who didn't see uh well, actually, no. If you didn't see it, turn the hell away from this yeah, channel I mean, right this now. Yeah, I mean, this uh, is a straight... <laughs> this is spoilers left and right. So if you haven't yeah. watched it, stop listening to this and go watch it. I mean, I feel like if you're listening... It's going to be marked... It's going to say spoiler in the title, whatever we end up titling it somehow. So yep. you should know. But if you don't know, if you made it this far without knowing that it's a spoiler, we're going to start spoiling stuff in the next 10 seconds. Ready? Okay, so stop. Stop. Yep. This is your last chance. Stop. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Okay, Steve, first, how do we even first, start talking okay. about this episode? Let's start chronologically. First scene. Last thing I expected to ever see was to start with Cobb Vanth. The return of Cobb yeah. Vanth right off the bat. Yep. Stopping the Pike Syndicate from trading spice on Mos Pelgo's property or area. Yes. Um, and why? And why did you least expect that? Because it's a man. He's a Mandalorian character, right? And yeah. this is a Boba Fett show, or we thought it was a Boba Fett show until the last two episodes turned into Mandalorian season two point five, apparently. Yeah, but yeah. So um, I love that scene. I love was, that scene. Yeah. And everything it was more, involving Vanth this episode was insane. But we'll get to the the big one later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, three. Th- I'll, I'll say four huge reveals of characters that I did not expect to be in this show. Yeah. I, I freak out every single time. And all four um, of them very well done. Yeah, I'm wondering if 
I'm not counting Vamp as a, as one of the four. I don't no, know if you are. are. No. Okay. Um, okay. My big question about that opening scene that I loved, how the hell did he sneak up on that gang of uh, pikes when it's just flat desert in every direction? There's, they didn't see him coming. Like He just like showed up there. And then he did it again yeah. later in the episode with Mandalorian. He just appeared from behind his deputy like out of nowhere. Like... What is your superpower that you can just do this? Yeah, Cobb Vamp is not just a you know Mandalorian pretender and a sheriff of the town. He's uh, also a ninja. He's also clearly a ninja yeah, or there's... an X Man or something. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's yeah, got he some kind of. He is Kitty Pride, actually. Yeah. Yes. Or Nightcrawler. <laughs> he has some kind right. of stealth <laughs> ability. Um, but yeah, that was great and such a badass move to just kick the spice over at yep. the end and just let it go in the air. That's like yeah, oh, it lets you know exactly move. where his character is and where that. Yes, like, it, it sets the bar, and that yep ends up playing itself out through the episode. Um, yeah. After that, we head directly to the N1 Starfighter, going to unknown planet. Yes, they didn't. We don't know where that was. No, no and idea. It's, uh, to my knowledge, where Luke's Jedi Praxium or I think it's just the Academy in the new uh, yes, canon is, the tril- the n- is not known. Like Yes, it's we, never see, been we see the building of the Jedi Temple that will become the school that is destroyed by Kylo Ren, Ben Solo, in the sequel trilogy. Yeah. Or the those events are referenced in the sequel trilogy. We see the building of that school. Yes. Wow. Right before we see the building of that school, we get the, re- the first big reveal of the great character r2d2 mm-hmm. is in this episode i gasped when the camera panned down and i saw yeah, a little saw like the... scopes thing. i went <gasps> and i grabbed my wife's leg and she was like why are you freaking out about a little I, I, uh... <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then the camera kept going she goes oh r2d2 yeah. i was like what you didn't recognize him from his little spinny thing yeah, of course you, you didn't R2. get him from his satellite dish that he had on the yeah. top of his head I mean, randomly only I pops out like in four <laughs> scenes you didn't pick that up <laughs> Yeah, I did. Yeah. So he's, he's looking. He looks for Luke and Han on Hoff in the snowy weather. That's what he's using. Yep. So so Jaren at that point is trying to deliver the uh, the tunic that he had made out of Beskar yes. for Grogu to him, and yep. who knows how uh, Din Jaren knows where this temple is because nobody else seems. Yeah. To that. I mean, how. We didn't see he didn't like exchange numbers with Luke <laughs> when at the end of season what's, two. What's but, your I mean, holopad number? Like, do you, can, can yeah, I, I mean, there there clearly must have been some kind of communication sent from yeah. R two or from Luke from the X wing to just be like, hey, this is where we are in case you need us or whatever. Um, but also at the same time, it seems like they wouldn't have done that based on the end of this episode. But right. anyway, we'll get to that too. I have thoughts on that. Um, um but yeah, clearly he knew where it was. I just flipped out the the nerd in me was just I had I had to pause it for at one point and tell my wife I'm like I'm sorry I just have to pause it I'm nerding out really hard right now and I just need a second yep (laughs) I I just need a second like thinking about I mean we're in the we've always wanted to see more Luke Skywalker after Return of the Jedi and we never got to that's like what this the end of Mando season two and what this episode is like giving us that like wish fulfillment of right. what we've always wanted to see as like fans of Luke from the original trilogy. Like I just grew up idolizing Luke Skywalker as so many other people did. And we're finally getting to see him in like his prime as a Jedi. And that's like what we always wanted. So no, just like knowing that this is where he is, is exciting to me. Like, Oh, right. we're seeing more Luke Skywalker. And like, even when, he, even when Mando landed on that planet, I wasn't necessarily sure that we were going to see Luke right. Skywalker. When when I saw R2, I was pretty sure. But when he when he laid down on the bench that the, the nice droids made for him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay, he's going to crash. Whatever we're going to do, we're going to come back to him with Luke and uh, Grogu. Well, um, see, even that, I was like, there's plenty of ways they can make this happen without having to do Luke Skywalker. Because they could just be like, he's not going to see you, or he left a message while you were asleep or something, right. you know, like or they, he's they off on some other world or doing something. Yeah. They, they or went like, on a mission or did something. Right. Or just Grogu shows up or it's right. just Mando and Grogu and they don't have to introduce Luke. Like yeah. there's so many ways. It could, so I was, my hopes were not, I mean, I was excited to see Grogu more than I was thinking that we we're going to see 
Luke. I was like, oh my god, we're gonna see Grogu. Right. This is gonna be great. Um, so before, and I gotta say, oh, what's sorry, that? I was gonna say it, it stands to the power. It stands to. It shows the real love that I have for Grogu. Um, that I was, you know, we're seeing. I mean, okay, we're getting there. The second character reveal is Luke Skywalker that we no. see training. What? The second character reveal we saw, we expected to see Luke Skywalker. No, we saw Luke before we saw. We saw Luke before we saw Ahsoka. Did we? We saw Luke before. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The thing with the oh, frogs. Oh yeah, they went. They went the through the montage. Of the frogs. Yep, the montage first, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we expect to see them coming back yes. to Mando. Okay. Right. Gotcha. 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 Because. The fact that we saw Luke Skywalker, that we saw R2 and we saw Luke, yep. made me think, okay, I mean, not consciously I didn't think this, but set us up for like, okay, we're not pops possibly going to see any other huge character reveals in this episode. We are getting Luke Skywalker and R2-D2. Like, right. they're not going to give us anything more. What else do we need? Yep. So that's at the stage for mind being blown later. But And, um, and for the record, the fact I saw this at 5 a.m., so in my ah, COVID-induced okay. uh, lack of sleep. <laughs> so okay. uh I'm I'm working on a time delay from you. So if my timeline's off, that's that's the twelve hour gap. Right, yeah. Um I was just gonna say that it really stands to the power of Baby Yoda Grogu that I was almost just as excited to see him than I was to see Luke Skywalker. Like I was like, oh yeah. look, he's so cute. Like he's he's a little bit bigger than he was last time. And, blah, blah, blah. and oh by the way, my childhood hero Luke Skywalker is <laughs> oh, he's right two there. feet away from yeah. awesome. Um so here we are. We're talking about Luke Skywalker coming back again. Mark Hamill credited in the credits. Yep. I made sure to I'm look for that. Assuming so did I. I'm assuming that they did the same uh, the same process that they did for the end of Mando season two, where he he acted it, and then also this other yeah did the stunt uh, stuff. similar the guy looking guy like yeah, yeah yeah the similar looking guy also acted everything, and then they kind of merged the two faces and did de aging, and then also just computerized his entire voice, which is insane to me that all the dialogue and I mean unless they did it differently than they did it in that. In the behind the scenes on Mando, end yeah. of Mando season two, all of Luke's dialogue is computerized. No yep. human said those things. Those are like they fed like every every word Mark Hamill spoke in the original trilogy, plus interviews that he did around that time and other movies and projects that he did around that time. They fed all that dialogue into a computer and then had the computer speak the lines of dialogue for Luke Skywalker, which is insane yeah. to me. Yeah, I think they took I think they took what Mark said on set and then used that for the pacing, but none of sure. what he said on set was what we heard. was actually there. Yeah, because it matches up. Yeah. So this was um, and definitely that makes the second uh like the um the advanced course in the, the deep fake technology because uh yeah. after when when they first when we see that first scene with Grogu and Luke, it's like they kind of beat around the bush a little. And they I do. was like okay, we see a couple of clips of kind of sideways of his face and whatever, and it's like, okay, they they did this to make it look better so that yeah, it looks as Uncanny Valley as the previous one, which I thought was still good, but a lot of people yes. had problems with. Um, I thought it was very good, except yeah. there were, like, you could tell that he was barely moving when he spoke in, yeah. in this season, in the season finale of Mando 2. His mouth was ver barely moving. His face yeah. was very not, it was like, we you know they got better at doing it and even in that first scene like you're saying they were cheating a little bit like i think there's two two or three lines of dialogue from luke in that first scene and he's off screen while yeah. he's saying them like they're showing grogu or they're you showing see, like his foot and, his foot or yeah. his hand or something while he's saying i'm like okay they figured out a way to do it and but, at this point in the show i was like okay this is all we're gonna get of yep, luke we're not 100%. gonna get we're not going to get an entire episode of Luke training Go Grogu. I was totally expecting what? what you were talking about of when we go back to Jaren, like that it just be Grogu that goes back. And it's like, oh, he left the training. He went back to see yeah. Mando. Yes. And here it is. And like, that was our little snippet cameo of Luke. Yes. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> yeah. He is in it. He is in the episode. Yeah. Um, Certainly more than the title character, Boba Fett, who is barely in this episode at all. Yeah. He's got one scene in this entire episode. One scene in the last two episodes of yeah. his own show. 
Insane. Insane. Uh, how great is it to be Tamara Morrison where you can be like, yeah, I'll be Boba Fett and I get a seven episode show and I barely have to show up because yeah. I don't know, two episodes I'm barely in and a lot of times if I'm wearing the mask, it's probably a stunt double. Yep. What a deal. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, I loved, uh, I loved this. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure where we are. We're just done like the Grogu, uh, Luke training. Yeah. We can, um, should we just keep rolling into the next, yeah, we might uh, as well because, cameo? Like I said, um, I thought it was just going to be Grogu going back to him. Lo and behold, yeah. it wasn't Luke or Grogu. <laughs> we pan back to, uh, Mr. Mandalorian himself and lo and behold, Ahsoka Tano shows up. Rosario Dawson herself in the flesh. I lost my mind uh -huh. when uh, she showed up and I lost it further. And this is like the kind of like connection stuff, the world building. Basically, they're like. These shows in general yep. are merging the live action films with the animated series. And they've all like the, the Clone Wars and Rebels have always been canon, but now we're really seeing them merge together. Uh, it's like, here's movies, here's animated television shows, here's live action shows, bringing them yep. all together as like an entity in the middle of the two of those things. And this was just like the perfect way to sync those two up. And it, I lost it when Ahsoka Tano said he's with Master Luke. Yeah. Like Ahsoka Tano is talking about Luke Skywalker. And referring that's, that's, to him as master luke as master luke like that's all it needed that's all i needed for my brain to explode yes. i think is that was the point where i was like i need to, i need to take a break she's <laughs> i was and, just just the fact that like even and we see them have a conversation later which also melted me that but was, like that one did no nope. but when she showed up just immediately seeing her on that planet and knowing like Ahsoka Tano knows Luke Skywalker. Ahsoka right. Tano is friends with Luke Skywalker. Ahsoka Tano... Uh, Ahsoka Tano is a friend of the family, you would say. Yes! She that even one, said I, that. I'm I a friend had, of the family. I had the oh. grin of a freaking four-year-old kid on Christmas when that... I was like, that's just perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. It was perfect. And it kind of made me like, okay, now I, I want to see... I want to see the conversation that Ahsoka Tano had with Luke skywalker about his dad yeah like like she's someone that has all these answers for him that he wants as the son of somebody who is lost or was lost to him you know what i mean that he never knew yeah. until the final moments of his life like what show me that like i need i want to see that so bad and you know what maybe we'll get it maybe we we'll may. get some i mean the felony verse yeah. the felony verse is uh wild and giving us things that we it never is thought we would see wild yes my god so so yeah um i don't know where are we what else is there ahsoka tano shows up i thought i gotta say i loved rosario dawson as ahsoka tano in mando season two i thought her intro scene in this when she showed up and started talking to uh, Mando, she seemed more like the animated Ahsoka Tano than she did in the original, the first time we saw her. And I don't know what it was. There was like a laugh that she did. Excuse me. She did like a little yep. giggle, like a, <laughs> which I was like, oh, that is that is exactly the character, her characterization from the Clone Wars series. Like, and light light and smiling and bubbly and like doing a little giggle. Like that right. was just like, oh, that's that's Ahsoka. That's which, 100% of so far. Which is funny, because right now, I, I think I texted you last night, I'm re-watching Rebels, and yeah. um, I, I'm i I'm dead nuts in the middle of T Twilight of the Apprentice. So, mm -hmm. like, I, I literally, last night, watched part one and two of Twilight of the Apprentice, and then watched this this morning, and I'm just on Ahsoka Overload. So, yeah. uh, it's, it's pretty insane, like, going from watching Ashley Eckstein's characterization to Rosario Dawson, and it's like, did they talk to each other? Because I'm pretty sure they must have talked to each other. No, I would be shocked if Rosario Dawson did not yeah. talk to her. Um, it would be insane if she didn't. There's no, there's no way. There's yeah. no way that they didn't have a conversation or that they're not constantly communicating. Um, if I was Rosario Dawson, I'm talking to her before I film every episode of yeah. anything that I'm doing. I was like, how would you say this? Yeah. How would, how do you think? And, you know, and like going from there, like, 
I mean, I don't know that she's doing that. Probably not. But if it's me, I'm doing that. If if, I'm, if it's me, she's on set with me every yeah. episode. She's on set advisor. Yeah, for credit, what I'm credited doing. as like a you know yep. executive producer type type role or whatever. Yeah. Uh, also, um, for the record, this uh, this podcast is uh, brought to you by Matt Beseda, uh for this wonderful Ahsoka Tano shirt. Uh, that's right. I had, that's to, I had to rock it. I was like, this is this is too perfect for tonight. So I didn't even think. I mean, I'm wearing I am wearing a nerdy shirt. I'm wearing a Superman shirt, but I didn't <laughs> was, think about it. It was it too enough. quick for you. Like I, it was I've, too quick I've been for me to put a Star Wars thing on. This. <laughs> Man, yeah. Um, we got a lot of callbacks to Luke training with Yoda in the Empire yep. Strikes Back. He's carrying baby Yoda on his back. Classic Luke. Mm -hmm. Always carrying a Yoda on his back. Yeah. Um, some of like the flips he did over a rock, exactly the same moves from Empire. I just recently watched Empire like a couple weeks ago. Right. So it's kind of fresh in my brain. He says like, no, don't try, do. Like he, uh, he stopped short of saying there is no try, which yep. is like a Yoda line. He's talking about yoda explaining to yoda to well, baby he even, yoda he even about had Grogu, yoda. when he was teaching him to balance he even had him doing the same thing that luke was doing upside down when yes he gets the vision about han and leia yeah it's like yep. oh okay feloni definitely thought of things <laughs> yeah for sure um and you know little, no, little... no credit credit where credit's due i mean i'm sure robert rodriguez and i can't remember who directed this episode either it was feloni i feloni believe it was Dave feloni. okay then yeah. okay then credit is where it's due <laughs> yeah yep i love the little callback to the little training orb and yep. it like surprising grow oh, yeah. it shot him and he like threw back and then yep. then later he's like jumping over rocks and stuff i was like he's doing it he's becoming a little jedi but um, still like stumbling in between much like Yoda would walk kind of yeah, weird, weirdly of in between, but as soon as he's force assisted, he looks like a little wizard out there. Sure. Um, the uh, um, oh, shit. What was I gonna say? Something about Grogu jumping, learning, training. Frogs. I don't know. I think it was just the fact that he would like the uh, the adorableness of the him trying to jump at first, yeah, and then being good at it later was the cutest thing ever that oh, him trying to jump and looking like my four-year-old trying to jump was just the, <laughs> yeah. the most perfect thing ever just the best um yeah i mean i thought the characterization of luke was really good in this episode um there was one thing i would have done differently and when we get there i'll talk about it yeah uh one thing i didn't love but also is makes sense so i'm fine with it but yeah. um well, and I, th I think uh, about how he's training Grogu. The only thing he knows is training with Yoda. Yeah. Like no, I know. He got one one ship ride with uh with Ben. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not all, not a ton. All he knows of the the Jedi way is what he learned in a swamp on Dagobah. Yeah, in like three days, <laughs> however long <laughs> he was there. Um. All right. So back to uh. Okay. So Mando leaves. Yep. Doesn't give Grogu the little armor. Yep. Um. Which is heartbreaking. But understandable. Also, but I I did love that they they that Ahsoka brought him out there and made him make the choice. Yes, and that yep. was that was it was good development for his character as well as you know yeah what's going like whatever Grogu's going to do in the future and all that. Yeah, and that's what I kind of almost got. I got a little a little emotional at that scene and also the scene when Luke climbed up that tree to show Grogu like the world and saying like the world is a big place or whatever he said there. I was like, yeah. those, those, those really great. Um, but like, um, Din Djarin, like having to choose to leave without, yeah. and then baby Yoda being like, ah, right. I like his little handout was like, uh, but I, but in that moment when Grogu was like reaching or like waving at the ship or like reaching for the ship, I immediately thought, of like all of the possibilities for the future of these two characters yeah. like mandalore like Din Djarin never takes off his mask right like pedro pascal i mean he does you, the voice you, you talk about guys who were making a bank for not doing a whole hell of a lot yeah he's not wearing <laughs> that Spo spoiler alert guys he's 90% of the time, not the one wearing that armor. <laughs> it's somebody else in there. He's doing the voice, and it's somebody else. He is not there. Hell of a voice um, actor, though. <laughs> he's a hell of a voice actor. 
but uh, you could. I don't think this is going to be the case, but Mandalorian season three, season four, season five could take place 20 years from now. And where Mandalorian is just older and it doesn't matter because he's still wearing the armor. And Grogu could be like an adult or at least old enough to like speak. You know what I mean? And they could have this like reconciliation and this drama of why didn't you come to see me or, you know, I loved you and you, I, you know, I'm grateful for the teachings of Luke Skywalker, but you abandoned me kind of like this father, like, like father son issues that could be incredible. And like, I realized that in that scene, that was like the potential for this relationship moving forward is just crazy. There's like just so much access, so many things they could access about these characters. Yep moving forward and i don't even know if that's their intention or if they have ideas for that but they are setting themselves up for a wealth of uh stories moving yeah. forward and they're doing a great job of it so so along the sorry. along that line though i did i saw so i don't know whether it was on reddit or somewhere else but somebody posed would it make sense and i'm tangenting to this because we're about the midway point of the episode or midway point of what happened in the episode um the it, would it make sense because this is technically the book of Boba Fett and the last two episodes we haven't seen Boba Fett barely it, at all would it have made more sense and did they call this the book of Boba Fett to kind of throw some shade but to call this like Star Wars uh, the Outer Rim or something along those lines and do Clone Wars style arcs like this where it's you yeah. know, three episodes wow. three episodes of Mandalorian three episodes of Boba on Tatooine um, you know, three episodes of Luke training Grogu, uh, being able to make this episodic arc based television that worked phenomenally in the Clone Wars. Like, you give me Umbara, you give me Andoran, and I am a happy man. Uh, would would something like that work in live action? And would that be a way to evolve this from us saying, well, you know, it was awesome television, but the show's the book of Boba Fett? Right. Where's Boba Fett? Yeah. Right. Uh, that would be cool. I would be totally down for that because you're tuning, then you're tuning in every week and you're not even really knowing what you're going to get. You just know you're going to get star Wars. Right. Like you, you know, week one, and then, you know, in a couple weeks that that is going to be tied with a bow or held up for whatever duration. And then you go in with another, like, Hey, what's this? Yeah, that would be great. I could do that. That'd be awesome. Um, because like, and that's the cool thing about them pulling these like switches on us for the last two weeks where we think it's going to be more book of Boba Fett, but like, Oh wait, no, it's Mandalorian. Oh wait, no, it's Luke goddamn Skywalker. Um, You know, and that's like, that preserves that like sense of surprise for us. You know what I mean? So yeah, I would do that. That'd be great. I would love not knowing what the next episode is going to be. That'd be great. Um, All right. So where are we? We're at probably Mando leaves. Yep, gives the he... gives the armor to Ahsoka, leaves and goes to find Vanth. Yep. Well, he Mos goes. Calgro. He originally goes to uh, to Boba Fett. To he Boba goes to talk to Boba Fett. Palace yep. and the one say, scene we get with Boba Fett in it right. is that. So, so Boba Fett basically says, "Hey, we still need more muscle. We don't really have foot soldiers. Like, yeah. they've got Kersentan and uh, Mando, but beyond that, and the the Power Ranger teenagers, right? Of course, you know. Yeah, and I'm, Fennec, I'm pretty sure obviously. there's. If we don't see a Megazord next episode, I will be highly disappointed. All their motorcycles will combine into one. He's going to ride a Rancor. I guarantee you he's going to ride a Rancor. He's going to have I know to. We have, I know we haven't seen him training or anything. Like There's they said no Rancor training to. montage. Yeah. Like they said he was going to have to do, but yep. there's no way we're not, he's not going to ride a Rancor. In that. They wouldn't, there's, if you introduce a baby Rancor and talk about learning to ride it, and then you don't have him do it in the finale, yeah. you're dumb. And Sorry. introduce that baby Rancor with Danny Trejo. Yeah, with Danny Trejo. Like, come on. But yeah, uh, Jaren goes to Freetown, which is what uh, <laughs> Mos Pelgo is now known as. In Sorry, order to... but first, oh. first we see him fly past the most badass Jawas of all time oh, yeah. that have yeah. a crate dragon skull <laughs> on top of Sandcrawler. Yes, absolutely. Wow. And Nothing did you notice in that, that bar, in the bar that they have a drink in 
yeah. it was a giant rib cage. Like they put the rib cage of the oh, um, from the crate dragon, crate dragon in the bar. That's Amazing, awesome. so cool. Um, and yeah, and he and uh, Vanth agrees to help him, right? Reluctantly. Um, like, reluctantly. Some, the the people of the town weren't too keen on it. Right. Um, but you know, I mean, Mando made a good point about. It's not necessarily going to stop at most Espa right. just because that's where it is now. They'll come for you and they'll try to run spice through your town and you don't like that, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, he agrees to help. And then a shadowy figure starts walking in from the horizon of the town. And at first I was like, what is this? And then the second I saw a cowboy hat, yep. I said, no, yeah, no, my God, no. And so my wife was if, like, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> And I was like, I'll tell you later. I'm just, yeah. I need to sit. I need to sit like this. <laughs> yep. And I need to focus on what's happening right now. So the way they shot it was great. It was the amazing, you know, the, the perfect, the outlaw perfect walking way. in, like shimmery perfect. sand dune heat, like distorting everything. Perfect. And then like the hands kind of come into focus and I was like, okay, who is this? And then the yeah. hat and you're just like, oh boy. Yeah, and as soon as you could tell it was a cowboy hat, I knew exactly what it was, and I was like, "No, this is amazing!" Oh, and, oh, man. and they so played good. they played the long game too because the oh, amount yeah. of time it took for him yep. to pull his head up <laughs> and for yep. you to see those red Duros eyes, <laughs> the red eyes, yeah, it was just like <laughs> that was great. Cad, mf and Bane. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And like. I felt like he was finally in his element. I was like, oh, yeah. when I was watching, when I'm watching Clone Wars and Rebels, I'm like, I like this guy. He's good. And he's like a good villain, but he's dressed like a cowboy and they're right. flying around space and they're like in Coruscant and stuff. And I was like, okay, now he's on Tatooine. It's like a Western vibe and he fits in perfectly. I was like, he is finally in his, in the element, in the element he needs to be in all the time. Right. He's finally there. So he looked good too like that was yeah. like mostly practical it looked like but obviously there must have been some kind of facial computerization maybe i, I can't really see, i, I couldn't know, really tell. tell it looked like, really good the the nose because in the the cartoon like duro's noses are like flat down their face yeah you could tell it was kind of bulbous like you had to fit somebody's actual nose under there right so i think it, it definitely... was mostly practical yeah, I think it was a lot practical. Maybe the eyes and the mouth might right. have been enhanced a little bit digitally, but it definitely, I think somebody was wearing a mask. Like oh, someone yeah. was wearing a costume. And it was the same voice, right? Am I wrong? It must I, have been the same guy doing the voice. If it wasn't, it was as good as Luke's voiceover. I know. Like, this is a situation where it doesn't really matter because, like, some, I get sometimes they can't cast the same person that did the voice if you don't look like the character, right? Uh, um, can confirm that Burton did return to do the voice. Corey Burton. Yeah. Did return okay. to it, so it is the same guy. But in this case, it's like an alien, so it doesn't matter what the person looks like, and yep. the voice, the coming out of the person wearing the costume isn't going to be the voice of the actor no matter who it is. So it's a perfect way for him to continue voicing the character, mm -hmm. um, which is just incredible. Um, I was, and like, he was not favorite character of rebels or clone wars but the fact that he was showing up in live action yeah like i had to stand up i was like i can't believe this is a cat pain. <laughs> i can't believe this cat my wife is like why this are you happening. walking around i was like just it's it's just he's a guy that's been around for so long and he's like i just i love i love the merging of the two and i love the like like i said earlier like clone wars and rebels have always been considered canon but they're just getting so wrapped up in in the movie storylines yeah. and everything else that we know that it's like now it's undeniable that they're canon and they are like necessary yeah things, and, things, things to watch if you want to know star wars like you have to watch these things and the the other kicker was if you if you i don't know if you noticed at the beginning of the episode the episode title was from the desert comes a stranger Wow, you're right. It was, and I I saw that, and then the Cab Cab Vanth scene happened, and I was like, okay, it's gonna be something with Vanth or whatever. Yeah, and then that happened at the end, and it took me like a couple hours after. I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> that's him. He's a stranger. That would be it. So so yeah, the fact that the the fact that it's titled after 
Cad, excuse me, Cad Bane's appearance makes me think that, I mean, we're going to see a lot more of him. We're at least going to see him next week because there's going to be the showdown with the Pike Syndicate and he was hired by the Pikes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He said the Syndicate is um, in charge or whatever he said. It was his last line when he left. Um, So we've talked a lot about him showing up, but what he did was shoot Cav Vanth. (laughs) Yeah. So he's so this is the furthest in the time this is the furthest in the timeline of Cad Bane that we've seen. Mm-hmm. Cause it takes place after Rebels, it takes place after obviously after Clone Wars. So there's so, some, some consternation in the nerddoms because in deleted Clone Wars episodes, Cad Bane was killed by Boba Fett in a duel, oh. and that's where Boba got the dent in his helmet. Okay. So I can't remember whether that got retconned somewhere or... I don't remember that. In an actual Clone Wars episode? Boba oh, Fett was a no, kid in, the, in Clone Wars. Bad Batch would have had to... He was in Bad... Cad Bane was in oh, Bad Batch. So... He was in Bad Batch, wasn't he? Okay, so it must have been... It must have just been retconned that he survived that battle or whatever. Because it was it was in the, I mean, the Lost clearly. Missions there. Or one of the deleted... Like, it was an unfinished Clone Wars... Okay thing that Filoni had done but that was all okay. that was always the thing is that Boba got the dent in his helmet from Cad Bane oh, okay I did not know that so uh well clearly unfinished doesn't mean canon because right. he's alive um but I wonder if they will allude to a previous showdown uh between the two of them if they are to meet uh and well here's the th- I just said maybe we're gonna see more of Cad Bane maybe we're not maybe Boba Fett's gonna kill him Maybe like they're saving his, but I don't know. Would you really, really reveal the character in one episode to only have him be killed in the next episode? Who knows? I don't know. Especially someone like Cad Bane, who's, you know, such an awesome character to have around for shows that are dealing with this sort of thing. I get that you might want him to be killed by Boba or Mando or somebody that we care about, but like, right. Um, Seems like you'd want it like you just introducing this character to the audience. Yeah. Seems like you'd want to like build him up, keep him around for a little bit longer. Maybe he dies at the end of Boba Fett season two or something, you know? Right. Um, so anyway, okay. We're going, we've been talking for quite some time <laughs> about one episode of television, almost yes. as long as the episode of television itself. So is there anything else you need to cover? I'm going to go to the end. No, I think, that's, I think that's the okay. last. Uh, oh, the Pikes um, did blow up the casino. You, oh, okay. Yes. I literally said to my wife, during that scene, the lead up to that scene, Jennifer Beale's character, the yeah. owner of the casino, whose name I don't remember, I said, I want to show about her. She seems like a super interesting character. She's barely in this. She seems like she's like, yeah, kind of like, got her hand in a lot of different pots. Like she knows a lot of stuff that's going on in town. It seems like it's she's a very interesting character in a very interesting yep. uh, community or whatever. I feel like a show about her. I, like, I want to know more about her, whether it's her own show or she's in an episode that's a focus on her. Like I want to know more about her. And then goddamn Bob blows up everything seemingly yep. kills everybody in that casino. And she seems seemingly dead. It would have been a so great that, arc in that, uh, Outer Rim uh, stories, though. It sure would have. And you know what? Maybe we'll get that if we get a flashback or something like that. Cause there we go. She just seemed like a super cool, interesting character that I want to know more about. And unless she is miraculously fireproof, yeah, she's probably dead. I did like Huge that they, uh, the, the two other Twi'leks asked if they wanted to, uh, if the, the Pikes wanted them to uh, clean up their helmets. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's like, oh. That was great. Oh, okay. Call back. Um, okay, you say Twi'lek, I say Twi'lek, which is correct. Is there a correct? Do you know Han that Twi'lek Han. is correct? Han Han. Han Han, okay, yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure if you go back and look, like, uh, Leia and Lando originally, like, mispronounces Leia's name, too. Like, I, there's a couple, really? couple really? points. Yeah, like, she's been, I think it was Leia or something like that. Oh, no, um... Grand Moff Tarkin calls her Leah in oh, All yep. of a New Hope. Yeah. All of a New Hope, he calls her Leah. Um, that might have been what it was, but yeah. like, but seems yeah, like the, names, the pronunciations are pretty fluid in the the Lucas Lucas in the, verse in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, you're, yeah. good call. Um, 
Okay, so the thing that bugged me about this episode, despite the fact that I thought there was a season finale, turns out to not be. So that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't bother me anymore. I'm glad that we're getting an actual season finale. Um Okay. This I gotta say, this is like one of those things with Star Wars where like, yeah, fine. It makes sense. I get it. It's just not what I hoped would happen. Like that kind of thing. I acknowledge yeah. this is my own personal bias and expectations being brought to this episode. So I understand why this happened. But at the end, when Luke is training with Go Grogu. Oh, by the way, we get, did I, <laughs> I don't remember. I'm so excited. I don't remember. We get, this is confirmation that this is the, this is the temple that will be destroyed by Kylo Ren. More it or less. It sure looked like it. Uh, I it think, sure looked like it. I think Matt and I were doing some research uh, looking at pictures of burning buildings from episode eight. And nice. it, it okay. looks pretty well like it from what I could gather. Pretty similar. I mean, it is the exact same construction as the temples, uh, the the huts that are on uh, Octo in yeah. Last Jedi. And if that's like a Jedi holy area or temple area, then it would make sense that they would look the same, which yeah. is cool. Um he clearly like researched the construction of like Jedi temples. Also, flashback from Grogu to the destruction yeah. oh, of wow. the Jedi temple from Revenge of the Sith. And I, for, for a second, for a second, I thought we were going to see Anakin. Oh, yeah. Like I thought we were going to see him like emerge between those stormtroopers or whatever with like the lightsaber. And I was like, whoa, I was like ready for it. Right. Or it even, even him just walking towards with the lights, like the, the standard yeah, Vader, I know. lightsaber down, yep. like just walking even as like Hayden Christensen as Ed Anakin. Yeah. I really thought that was going to happen, but it didn't. That's fine. Anyway, I'm almost glad. Cause I would have, you know, needed to scream at five o'clock in the morning when I was watching this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would have been too much. Yeah. Um, okay. So Luke is sitting with Grogu in the little stone hut or whatever. And he says, you can choose between the armor, which is a little mithril esque. Yeah. Uh, to borrow a term from another universe, um, like chainmail vest and Yoda's own lightsaber. Crazy. At first, first, my initial problem was pretty sure Padawans have to find their own crystal and build their own lightsaber. Yep. But I'm like, okay, Ilum's destroyed because Ilum turned into um, Starkiller Base. So Ilum doesn't exist anymore. Um, or it's not a safe place to go. Right. Anyway. Um, so maybe Jetta, kyber crystals, same thing. Yeah. Maybe kyber crystals are hard to find. So I under, and it being like the same species, I understand him passing down this right. lightsaber breaking, breaking with Jedi tradition. Right. But this at is the like, same time, okay. Luke doesn't know that because he was past his lightsaber. You know what? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Steve. So in his mind, it's totally fine. I'm going to give you this lightsaber passed down from my mentor. Same species. Perfect. Right? right? Great. Scale, scale Breaking... perfectly for you. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, actually, I really would have loved if it was like a really tiny one. And he had like a little just like yeah. pop, popsicle stick sized <laughs> lightsaber. Would have been amazing. Um, but... So I get that. I was like, okay, yeah, this is Luke breaking with Jedi tradition, yep. handing down something that makes sense. But then when he makes him choose between something that represents his friends and his attachments versus uh, the way of the Jedi, I was really kind of bummed out that he forced him to make that choice because you would think Luke in, in Empire Strikes Back is being advised by Obi-Wan and Yoda to not go save his friends. Don't go save his friends. That's what the Emperor wants. Right. That's what Vader wants. You're playing into their hands. Stay here and complete your training. If you honor what they're sa if you honor what they if you honor what they stand for, let them die. Yoda literally says that. If you honor what they stand for, yes, stay here and let them die. So yeah. I would have hoped that Luke would have looked back on that terrible advice from Yoda and Obi-Wan and brought it into his new Jedi order saying, yes, it's okay if you still have your friends because 
my relationship with my friends brought me uh, just so much like love and understanding and power. I, I gained so much power and knowledge through my love of Leia, who turned out to be my sister, but also Han and Chewie and the droids, 3PO, R2-D2. Like, R2-D2's like a, a good friend of Luke and he's right. there. Like, R2's there. Right. Luke, you have, have like your best friend is there with you and you're not letting Grogu talk, even see his uh, dad? Din Djarin, like his, his dad. His, his crazy uncle. <laughs> exactly. Five years ago, your dad died in your arms after saving your life, and you're not going to let this little guy right. see his father figure? Like, so, that seemed like a little harsh for me. And But, yeah. at the, again, I understand that it is the character of Luke Skywalker that dedicated himself inexplicably to the same way of training that Obi-Wan and Yoda trained him. Therefore, it led to the inevitable repeated failure of the Jedi order when Ben Solo turns to the dark side, becomes Kylo Ren, slaughters all the students and betrays Luke and goes right. on to start the Knights of Ren and join the first order. So like, I understand that, but I really, really wanted Luke to be like, this didn't work for me. So I'm going to change things. So it's better for Grogu and my new Jedi Order, but he doesn't do that. So that was a little bit of a letdown. I gotta say, that was the only no. thing that I didn't love about this episode. To be fair, they left it very open-ended, so we don't know if this was just a test. Because That's also true. we've seen Yoda pull weird tests and stuff before, too. Uh, so, uh, more to come on that, hopefully, next week? Yeah, and we don't know what he chose. Right. So It's they... not even whether or not it's a chest. We don't even know what he chose. He could just be like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna be a Jedi. Right. Which, which would which would answer our questions of whether or not he was there, whether or not he gets murdered by Ben Solo. Right. Um, you know, fifteen years from now or whenever ten years from now, whenever that happens. Um Yeah. Yeah. It'll be and an it interesting would, some finale. To... And it would free him up to become a cast member of Mando season three if he chooses to go back it's true. with Din Djarin. Because I don't know, like, can you, you imagine know, Mando almost, season three without Grogu? Uh, well, I saw an episode last week without him, and it was really good. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, Case in point. Like, you're right. They can, they can and, do it. And there's been episodes of Mandalorian where he's like, hey, watch him for a while yeah. while I go do this cool thing, and then he's not in it. So, yeah, yeah. you're right. It can happen. But the, right. I, I almost want to say that they're, like, partly for that reason, they won't because how jarring would it be if he just shows back up? Like, for people that watch yeah. Mandalorian but didn't yeah. watch Book of Boba Fett, how jarring would it be if Grogu just shows back up randomly and is like, oh, hey, I know I left oh, last here episode, I am. but yeah. I'm here now, so hi. Yeah, I mean, if they deal with it in the next episode of Book of Boba Fett, if we get the... I Something tells me we're not going to get the answer from Grogu in... Mm -hmm. The next episode i feel like because the last two episodes have had nothing to do with the main <laughs> plot line right. of the show the finale has got to be the quote-unquote war that they're talking about the big battle riding the rancor assumedly and like everything that they've been talking about um and grogu's decision will, will possibly be open-ended for quite some time yeah. possibly not even found out in mando season three i feel like it's more powerful. It's not what we want. We want Mando and Grogu to be together, of course. But it's more powerful if he chooses to stay with Luke and complete his training or at least continue his training to a certain point. And because, like you said, then it is more powerful. And like what I was talking about earlier, it's more powerful if in Mando season five or whatever, unexpectedly, a grown-up Grogu shows up, yep. and we're like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, if they want to do that, they're setting themselves up for that, and they can do that. It remains to be seen what they're going to do, and we won't know until next week. This is true. And I don't know what's going to happen next week. I hope it's good enough that it warrants us to dedicate a completely separate special episode to it, which we did not plan on recording until, until we both watched this episode. Right. 
Yeah, we um, uh, to to put it in context, I had sent a text earlier saying, "Hey, we may want to do uh, this one's this one's pretty good. We may want to do a, a reaction episode." And, and I was I like, "How that... good can it possibly be?" <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I, I didn't say that back to you, but in my head, I was like, "There's no way it's right. that good." <laughs> what? <laughs> and then, as soon as Mike finished. <laughs> <laughs> the text that came to me was just expletives and let's do it. I think I now. said, I think what I said is holy hot damn. I'm ready to record that <laughs> reaction episode. Yep. So here we are. We've officially talked for three minutes longer than the episode was, including credits about good for us, the show, because we're never, you know, at a loss for words. So no, well, I guess we'll see, depending on the strength of next week's episode, we will see. If you get another special uh, episode of the Multiverse Report for the reaction, or if it just is uh, in our regular Boba Fett seen it yet episode, or yep. uh, not episode, segment. segment. Yeah, segment of the episode. So we shall see. Um, yep. But yeah, I think that's all, that's all my thoughts on this wonderful episode of Star Wars television, Steve. No, it's perfect. I would say uh, that's that's probably uh, 51 minutes is a good enough, uh, good enough reaction pod. Uh, for any of you who don't listen to us regularly and are catching this on YouTube or on your podcatcher of choice, uh, subscribe, like, uh, leave us a review, um, keep coming back for more. We always record weekly, uh, eight o'clock, nine 30, sorry, wrong podcast, yeah. nine, nine yeah. 30 Sunday nights on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash the multiverse report. Come check us out. Uh, we'll be around. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time in the multiverse.